Okay, I think it's roughly four o'clock now, so let, let's begin. Um, and I'd like to welcome you all to the first of three uh, James W. Richard lectures by the great Princeton historian of religion, Professor Peter Brown. My name is Mark Whittle, uh, and I'm a professor in the astronomy department and the current chair of the Page, Barber, and Richard Lecture Committee. Now, before we introduce Professor Brown, it's uh, customary and appropriate to uh, say a few words about these two lecture series, uh, which are the most prestigious in the university uh, and the College of Arts and Sciences. So first of all, the Page Barber uh, lecture series was established in 1907 um, by a gift from Florence Lathrop Page of the Barber family in Barbersville in honor of her husband, uh, Thomas Page, who graduated from UVA's law school in 1874 and ultimately went on to become the US, um, US ambassador to Italy during the Woodrow Wilson uh, presidency. Mrs. Page's gift specified that the Page Barber lectures should be in uh, any field in the arts and sciences and were intended to present uh, some fresh aspect of the department of thought in which the lecturer is specialist. Past Page Barber lectures uh, have included uh, the President and Chief Justice William Howard Taft, the poets T.S. Eliot and W.H. Auden, uh, the philosophers Alfred North Whitehead and John Dewey, psychologists B.F. Skinner and Robert Coles, physicists Robert Millikan and C.N. Yang, and just last month cosmologist Mike yes, Turner. They are, they are. And looking forward, uh, our next Page Barber speaker will be the influential uh, British literary critic, Terry Eagleton. Now, turning to the closely related and equally prestigious James W. Richard lecture series, uh, this was established in 1923 from the, uh, by an endowment from the will of Mrs. Esther Coffinberry in honor of James W. Richard to support a series of lectures in religion and history. Past James W. Re uh, Richard lecturers have included the theologian, theologians and philosophers um, Etienne Gilson, Paul Tillich, Wilfred Cantwell Smith, and Langdon Gilkey, and historians uh, Yaroslav Pelikan, Jakob Neusner, and uh, Edmund Morgan. Uh, more recent speakers have included philosopher Stephen Mulhall, political theorist Quentin Skinner, historian Lynn Hunt, and religious studies scholar David Shulman. And looking forward, the 2013 uh, Richard Lectures will be given by the renowned Buddhist scholar Robert Buswell. Now, if you wish to revisit any past lectures, most have appeared as books published by the University of Virginia Press. And indeed, our hope is that this week's lectures will also appear in book form and make a significant addition to an already well-known and prestigious series of monographs. Uh, we've also attempted to enter the 21st century by videotaping our lectures. Uh, thank you, Alex. The back is doing that now. Uh, I invite you to visit the Page, Barber, and Richard series website where you can re-watch any of our lectures from the past three years. And I probably in about two to three weeks, these lectures will be on that website as well. Now, before I hand over to Professor Shuva, who will introduce Professor Brown, I do have a couple of logistical announcements to make. Uh, first, the good news. Um, after each of Professor Brown's three lectures, we will have uh, both time for questions, but followed by a reception just outside the auditorium in the foyer. And now the bad news. Professor Brown's third and final lecture on Thursday coincides with the parking nightmare associated with the evening football game against North Carolina. Now, um, I will be discussing Thursday's parking arrangements in more detail just before tomorrow's lecture, but if you know now, you won't be attending tomorrow's lecture, but you will be attending Thursday's lecture, then please see me during the reception and I can give you a parking permit for the Thursday event. And with that, we can now move seamlessly from the profane to the sacred. 
and I'd like to invite Professor Carl Schuver from the Religious Studies Department to introduce our distinguished guest and 2013 James W. Richard lecturer, Professor Peter Brown. Carl. It is my privilege to introduce our speaker this afternoon, Peter Brown, who is the Philip and Beulah Rollins Professor of History at Princeton University. Professor Brown is one of the world's leading authorities on the Mediterranean world, and he is one of the most vivid and elegant writers of history of the last half century. Over the course of his distinguished career, he has taught at the Uni University of Oxford, the University of London, the University of California, Berkeley, and Princeton. He has published a dozen books, and he has been the recipient of a number of awards and honors, including the prestigious Kluge Prize for Lifetime Achievement in the Study of Humanity, which he was awarded in 2008. In every generation, there are scholars who disrupt the boundaries of our academic disciplines and expand our horizons of understanding by uncovering new evidence, posing different questions of existing evidence, or employing new and sometimes controversial methodologies. But every now and then, someone comes along who so thoroughly challenges our conventional modes of inquiry as to create an entirely new area of study. Professor Brown is one such scholar. He has pioneered the study of late antiquity, a period that runs roughly from 200 to 800 CE, which begins with the economic and military crisis that afflicted the Roman Empire in the early third century and runs to the rise of the Islamic Caliphate and the Carolingian Empire in the eighth. These long centuries had hitherto been described as a period of inexorable decline from the lofty peaks of classical Greek and Roman civilization. The chill winter of neglect began to be thawed in the middle of the 20th century with the work of A.H.M. Jones and Arnaldo Mamiliano on the later Roman Empire. But it was Professor Brown who bequeathed to us the idea of late antiquity as its own distinct epoch in which emerged new empires, new religious ideals, and new ways of conceptualizing the links between heaven and earth the living and the dead, and the rich and the poor. In his research, he has refused to privilege those who wrote in Greek and Latin, taking into account a much wider sweep of sources that include, among many others, sources written in Syriac, a dialect of Aramaic, and Coptic, a descendant of the language spoken by the pharaohs of Egypt. Professor Brown can be credited as the founder of late antique studies, not only because of the uniqueness and breadth of his vision, but also because of the tenacity with which he has advanced this vision. He has provided several programmatic outlines of the period in books such as The World of Late Antiquity, The Making of Late Antiquity, and The Rise of Western Christendom, works that are particularly notable because they refuse to confine themselves to the boundaries of the Roman Empire. But he has also interrogated many particular aspects of late antique society. In his book, The Cult of the Saints, he asks how it came to be that Christians venerated the dead bodies of saints. In Power and Persuasion, he examines the societal changes that allowed Christian bishops to enter into the halls of power. And in his most recent and monumental book, Through the Eye of a Needle, Wealth and the Fall of Rome, and the Making of Christianity in the West, 350 to 550 AD, he charts a radical change in attitudes towards wealth and giving. Wealth and its uses is a particularly delicate subject in late antiquity, no less than today. Professor Brown has for more than a decade devoted his energies to studying the transition from classical to Christian approaches to giving. And we are deeply fortunate to be able to sample some of the fruits of his many labors this week. So I, I ask you to join me in welcoming him as he comes to deliver his first lecture entitled, Remember the Poor. Leadership and Giving from Paul to Cyprian. Professor. Brown. 